Stress is real, and right now we are feeling very stressed with the different things that are not happening. Technology is happening to us. We are back live. Stress is something that happens to us every day. It's a normal thing. The whole idea about stress is that you need to understand what level of stresses that you can manage. So for instance, though stress happens to all of us, we need to know what our stresses are. And as we have our stresses, we need to understand how to manage them. Great to see you back, Patsy. We had a bit of uh, technical issues there. As you're coming on, uh, this is Clarity Coach Lucy. And I just want to share with you the WHO statistics that place Kenya fourth in the highest number of depressed people in Africa. This is a very sad reality. But welcome to Tuesday Talks at 3. And this is the Stress Situation Series, Episode 4. And in Episode 4, we are seeking to understand the importance of mental wellness. And if I could just take you through a little recap of Episode 1, 2, and 3, where we defined stress. We understood what the causes of stress are and were or continue to be for us and then the red flags of depression and i really want to um, show the importance of understanding these red flags of depression because they creep up upon us and i can see patsy has joined us great to see you here patsy great to see you so when Thank we are looking you. at the karibu sana we're looking at the red flags of depression it's important for you to feel them not only in your mind but in your body even in your emotion because stress that is not managed well can lead to depression and you can already see the statistics the who places kenya fourth in the highest number of depressed people in africa so clearly we do need to work on our mental wellness and this is what patsy is here for in session two episode two we looked at understanding our personality and with our personality how it is that we can cope with stress and then we looked at the importance of talk therapy we are back there again it is important to talk i just spoke with a lady uh yesterday and she wanted to join our session and she shared with me that she had dropped into depression and didn't get to work for 10 days this is real guys i shared with you that at the onset of the pandemic i was home for two weeks and that two weeks i was depressed and i was aware that i was dropping into depression and therefore i had certain things that i did to pull me up and one of them uh, patsy has really spoken about is keeping healthy keeping active that is what i did so i ate well i slept well and i kept myself busy as i slowly climbed out of that hole i then found what i loved doing and it's exactly what i'm doing right now and i stepped out of that hole that would have pulled me in deeper of depression in episode three we looked at knowing your stresses not only do you need to know your stresses because at times we've got the the stresses that uh, or the stresses that are presenting and then we've got the other ones that are underlying and patsy shared with us the example of a child who comes home and is acting up and that is the presenting stress but the underlying one could be the bullying in school maybe that is what it is so as a parent are you looking out for it and then she shared healthy ways to cope well Today, we seek to identify the importance of mental wellness. And the question is very simple. What intentional action do you do for your mental wellness? What intentional action do you do for your mental wellness? Share with us here on the chat, because we are here to help one another. The month of April is coming to an end of stress awareness, but this topic does not come to an end. It is something we have to keep on talking about, being aware of. In fact, at this point, can you just tag your friends, your relatives, your acquaintances, and tell them to come onto the session and share with us how it is that they are able to build up on their mental wellness and the question today is very simple we would love for you to answer and share with us and then we can sample some of the contributions well patsy is here and patsy i'd love to welcome you to our final session but like i say this conversation has to continue and i want to just ask you how 
can we manage this mental wellness? Because I believe that mental wellness is as important as physical wellness. I believe that. And most of often, what we end up doing is taking care of our physical self. Like I said, I ate well, I slept well, I kept active. I started doing exercise when I was getting depressed. I was already depressed. I had mild depression. But to help me come out, these are the things I did for my physical body. So share with us the importance of mental health and perhaps certain tips that we can take home on how we can keep ourselves in our mental wellness state in a healthy state. Welcome, Patsy. Uh, thank you, Lucy. Uh, sorry, uh, there was a technical hitch. I disappeared and now I'm back. I thank God uh, I'm back. Uh, let me start by wishing you a happy birthday today. Thank you. Uh, Facebook reminded me it is your birthday today. Thank you so and much. And we thank you. I appreciate you. Okay. So uh, just like you mentioned that uh, mental health is equally as important, uh, as important as physical health, uh, it is because mental health, our mental health includes uh, our psychological, emotional, and social well-being. And it is therefore, it, it, it affects how we feel and how we think, meaning it is about our mind. And uh, eventually it will affect how we act. So it is very important. Our mental health is important because when we feel and think, we end up acting. And if our mental health is not okay, of course we will not act well. So uh, 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 what we are saying is that um, mental, our mental health starts from the time we are children. Uh, then it goes to the uh, early adulthood and then adulthood, like now for, from childhood, uh, the teenage years, and eventually uh, our adulthood. So mental health, is it happens at all the stages of our lives. And that is why it is important because you have mentioned about a child who may going, be going through uh, issues or mental issues, even uh, stress, let's say stress at school. And this is a child. So their mental health will be affected at this time, their children. And if they, it is trauma that they are going through, it is going to manifest itself eventually in life. And uh, what I would like to say here, Lucy, is that uh, uh, good mental health does not mean that there is the absence of illness. You can still have uh, the chronic illnesses or just, Ill let's say, you know, like for there are those illnesses you inherit. Uh, for example, the non-communicable diseases are like hypertension, diabetes, and all that. You know, that is beyond your control. But it does not mean that when you have these diseases or when when uh, you're, you're, when, when, uh, you're mentally okay, uh, you, it, it means that you do not have these diseases. No, you may have them, but your mental health is good. So in this case, men, uh, mental health will also help us to know how to live with these lifestyle diseases and, um, and also know how to navigate life even with that. And that's why we say it does not mean that it is the absence of illnesses. No, no, no. You, you can still have what, uh, whatever illness you have. But if you're mentally okay, you, it, it is a plus to you because you will know how to manage even these chronic illnesses. That's very good to note. You know, at times you may think that your illness is, uh, yes, your illness can be as a result of, of depression because I'm sure you're going to share with us a few more tips there. But it doesn't mean that it is uh, um, this mental, uh, poor mental health exists without you uh, being ill. You can be ill, but you have a healthy mental health. This is what you're saying. I'm just going to sample what yes. a few have said here. 
We see, oh, great to see you here, Sheila. You say, fourth most depressed in Africa is appalling mental wellness. I am immensely glad for your talks, helping us take action to be well. Very true. We're liking that one, Sheila. Thank you so much. You also say that exercise is my go-to uplifter, long, brisk walks specifically. I love that. So I'm loving the fact that you're answering the question there already. What intentional action do you do for your mental wellness? So we've got Sheila there taking long, brisk walks. And then we've got uh, Agnes. Oh, great to see you, Agnes. Fancy, Agnes is here. So Agnes, you say, yes, it is. Happy birthday, Lucy. Hugs, girlfriend. Thank you so much, Agnes. Thank you for those lovely wishes. And for you, you say exercise. Exercise helps you a lot, and we are loving that. Thank you so much. Yes, so as we are looking at the different aspects of mental health, the one thing that I am picking, Patsy, is that mental health, health, I beg your pardon, can happen at all stages. This is not an assumption that mental health only happens at a certain stage like adulthood or um, adolescent. It, adolescence. It also happens in childhood. So it is important mm -hmm. that as help givers, as nurturers, as guardians, as parents, that we are taking care of the children specifically because for them it could be trauma and it will manifest itself even later on in life. We've talked about self-awareness in the previous episodes. We've talked about our limiting beliefs and all these also could be compounded by trauma, the trauma that we have gone through. If we do not deal with the trauma at that stage, it manifests itself later on. But I love that where you say it does not mean it is in the absence of illness. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for saying that, Patsy. Well, we were going ahead with the points of giving us tips on the importance of this mental wellness. Please go ahead, Patsy. Uh, thank you, Lucy. Uh, the importance of uh, positive mental health, uh, one, uh, it broadens our perspective. You know, like when you don't have many options in life, but you're mentally okay, it broadens your thinking because you are okay mentally. You are able to get options in case you're faced with a problem, in case you're faced with a challenge and you're mentally healthy. You will be able to think about solutions to your problem. Uh, you'll be able to, to, to think about, uh, you, you'll be able to make even tough decisions in your life because you are okay. There's nothing that is bothering you. So it is important that we have a positive, uh, we have positive mental health. Yeah. Uh, the other issue, Lucy, which I would really wish to uh, mention here is that uh, human beings, or yeah, I'll say human beings, we are wired to, you know, we, we, they, that, there's not that defense mechanism which we have in ourselves. We want to hope for the worst so that in the event something happens along the way, whether it is good or bad, at least we were prepared for the worst. But what we are saying here, do not hope for the worst as an individual. Uh, that's why we are talking about positive mental health. Always hope for the best. And it is, uh, the studies say that for every one positive, uh, negative uh, thought, replace it with three. And the reason why they're saying three, I believe it is because the negative thoughts have really taken root in our minds. And it is something that has been proven by studies. Yeah. So we are being taught here that the best thing is for every negative thought, replace it with three positive thoughts. So uh, the way we are wired, uh, let us now start working towards it. And because we are here, we talked about positive self-talk. For us, we are saying that is the route to our solutions. Because what you tell your mind, as we say, mental health, uh, it, uh, it's about how we feel, how we think, and eventually how we act. So when we tell ourselves that uh, things will be okay, eventually we are going to work to act that way. We are going to work towards bettering things and, of course, working towards making things better for us. Wow. Uh, the other, sorry, okay. Wow. I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying wow about is where we are saying we need to replace 
one negative thought with three positive thoughts. Now, as you say, we are wired as human beings to be pessimistic. That is where our, our needle goes towards pessimism. No matter how optimistic we are, we are always prepared for the worst. It's not a bad thing to be prepared for the worst, but it is about what attention that you give that statement or that, or that status is what I wanted to say of uh, thinking of the worst. Because when you prepare yourself, you are able to take care of any situation that arises as opposed to a situation where you're not prepared at all. And then you start to feel inadequate and you begin to sink into certain things and you feel useless, you're not up to the task. But when you say we are replacing any negative thought with three positive thoughts, you know, I just want to challenge the audience here today. If they can actually put down for me three positive thoughts right now, and this challenge is being put out there because as human beings, just as Patsy is saying, our natural go-to is the negative. So if I asked you what is wrong with your day today, you will give me a whole list of things. But if I was to ask you what is good about your day today, you will stop and think first and think, um, um, and then you will begin to justify why something is good, but still, even as it is good, you're going to give it a certain measurement. You're going to be very careful how you deliver the goodness. Why? Because you feel you're going to jinx it. Because if you talk about something good that is happening in your life, as human beings, we believe we're going to jinx. And as you can see, Patsy, nobody has put in any good or positive thought in the chat as we speak right now. So I'm asking again, are we able to come up with three positive thoughts right now? Let us see the chat, just the chat, sorry, going live right now. Let's give it at least 10 seconds, Patsy. And let us see whether our audience can give us, if not three, then at least one. But this just goes to prove what you're saying, Patsy, that indeed, as human beings, our needle is towards pessimism more than it is towards optimism. And if we are being optimistic, it is because we are trying to be intentional to come out of this darkness that perhaps is, is enveloping us, is, is trying to take us over. Well, in fact, it's even been 20 seconds now, Patsy, and nobody has been able to share with us three positive thoughts. Well, we can understand why the statistics are real. This talk is a real talk. This is what is happening in our lives today. It is easier for us to come up with something negative than it is to come up with something positive. Well, there, Agnes has finally come on. Agnes, it took you over two minutes to do this, but thank you. Grateful for good weather. Look at that. Grateful for good weather. Grateful for good health. These are important things to be grateful for, and I'm sure you're going to touch a bit on that later thank you agnes for sharing we appreciate you let us keep engaging in this way so patsy the body and the mind work together because you said we feel we think and we act so basically stress is the way we feel and it's a way it affects how our body reacts and i remember you mm -hmm. said that in our first episode and i really appreciate that because in the last two weeks, I have been going through certain kind of stress, which is not abnormal. But the way I have handled the stress in these last few weeks because of you, because of this session, has been very different. The one thing that I have done is recalled how I handled that stress the last time. And it helped me. Thank you so much, Patsy. So let us go on and just look at those positive, uh, the importance of the positive mental health. Please go ahead, Patsy. Oh, thank you, Lucy. And I'm glad that uh, Agnes has mentioned uh, about uh, being grateful for the weather. We are, remember we are talking about the tips that will help us also have that uh, positive mental health, positive yeah. outlook. So I will pick, I will go straight to the issue of gratitude. Thank you, Agnes, for mentioning. It is one of the ways uh, you can now uh, uh, really have a positive uh, mental uh, health because you are grateful. It means you are giving thanks uh, and it has a very powerful impact 
on our, our emotional well-being because mm -hmm. acknowledging the good things in life you know you will tell yourself you will compare yourself this is the only time we are allowed to compare ourselves to people this is the only time Lucy let me repeat <laughs> it is the only time we are allowed to compare ourselves because why i'm saying this there's a time one of the episodes we say do not compare your life to other people but i'm saying here the only time you are allowed to compare is look at people who are though there are those people who are unwell there are those people who are fighting for their lives and also there are those people, like for example people in ukraine sincerely it is a sad sad affair in that country but when we think about how peaceful our country is you know it gives us that uh peace peace of mind knowing that even if i will sleep hungry but i'm sleeping hungry in a peaceful country and therefore this uh the issue of gratitude really impacts on our mental on, on our emotional well-being it is the same thing mental and emotional well-being there's a very big relationship between joy and gratitude and allow me Lucy to mention here even though I was going to do it at the at the, at the end of it but allow me to mention um there's um an a writer or an author by the name Brain Brown and she said it is not joy that makes us grateful but it is gratitude that makes us joyous so when you practice gratitude you will experience joy and and i still say thank you uh, agnes for bringing it up the other tip uh let, uh, let me just finish then uh, uh with the other tip of um that helps us with the positive mental uh health is the act of forgiveness uh -huh. forgiveness start by forgiving yourself let's say for example you have been going through a situation and you are telling yourself that it is your fault don't be so hard on yourself because you re you still need that self you still need yourself to navigate through this life so if you're hard on yourself who is going to take care of you so start by forgiving yourself and forgiving yourself it is the same as the way jesus took away our sins you know like you just relinquish your your problems somewhere and that is the act of forgiving yourself and when you do that you will be in better mental health yes. to face tomorrow but when you do don't do that you will the same same mind that is in turmoil is the same same mind that you need to face tomorrow true true yes you're very right i mean i'm loving what agnes is saying here she's commented for every negative thought replace it with three positive thoughts this requires practice love this yes it requires practice and the good thing is that now you have the knowledge you do something about it that is when the knowledge comes into full circle agnes so i'm definitely going to be practicing it um i was practicing gratitude i'm really good at gratitude nowadays at times um i even think that every sentence i have has got a thank you and uh, and gratitude and uh, appreciation but this is this is what i have done with practice and i've put it into practice so i want to be able to think about three positive thoughts for every negative thought and i must say something again i i did not mention this in the beginning patsy but i think it's important because of practical lessons for this month of april like i said i've been going through my own personal stresses which which is not abnormal i mean everybody goes through this but the difference mm -hmm. is how you manage it and whether you're going to stay in that specific space being stressed and not managing it and ending up being depressed that is where the difference comes in and these sessions that we are doing are very important to keep on bringing out the awareness so for me it was the waking up in the morning and feeling anxious and i shared this with you patsy that i would wake up in the morning and i had this anxiety all the time every morning i'd wake up and have anxiety i am proud to say that in the last one week every morning i have woken up joyous and full of gratitude why because i am putting into practice 
what we are now sending out as a message here to the world. It is not just a matter of LMC doing this and ticking a box. I'm also learning. I'm learning. And so with that anxiety, I was able to figure out what my stressors were. And like I said, how did I manage it the last time? Mm -hmm. So now you've given us three tips. And you've told us the positive thoughts, three of them for one negative thought. And I'm writing notes. That's why I'm looking down. Gratitude, uh, which Agnes brought up and which you already had prepared. Uh, gratitude makes us joyous. I'm loving that statement. And you said the lady's name is Bren Brown. Bren mm -hmm. Brown. So yes. we can all look up Bren Brown. Thank you so much, Patsy, for that. The other one is forgiveness. And I just want to talk about forgiveness of self for a minute here or maybe just 30 seconds how do we forgive ourselves we can forgive ourselves just in our mind and and say that yes i forgive you lucy and move on however i believe in the journaling in the writing in the transferring from the mind to paper and i learned this somewhere once and i use it i write a letter to myself and I forgive myself for the specific things. In the same way that when you are with somebody, uh, a partner, uh, an acquaintance, or a workmate, and they come in, they say, please forgive me. Or a child comes and says, or a relative, please forgive me. You actually say to them, what am I forgiving you for? Because what you're doing is you want the person to bring forth that thing that they want to be forgiven for. Why? Because when it stays in the mind, it's just in the mind. Things happen in two places, in the mind and it happens down in reality. So to move it from your mind down to a piece of paper and writing it gives it meaning, gives it sustainability that you are able to forgive yourself. And tomorrow, and I'm talking about tomorrow being a time in the future, tomorrow when it comes up again, you remind yourself, I have forgiven myself because I wrote it down and I forgave myself for these two issues or this one issue or these three issues. It is a positive talk that Patsy is talking about. So we talked about those three and I'm absolutely loving it. Well, we are talking about the positive aspects of uh, mental wellness or mental being. But what is the impact of poor emotional health, Patsy? Because if you're talking positive, there must be the other side, which is negative. What is the impact? Maybe you could touch on a few things. I know that one of the things would be being easily distracted. You know, your attention span, even as an adult, becomes very short. It could be sadness or like what I was feeling, anxiety. There's just this anxiety that, that is ruling your life. Poor concentration. You're trying to do something and you keep on going back to another thought which you cannot really recall. And you feel your being or your spirit is not at peace. Now, that was me two, three weeks ago. But I'm very happy to say that I'm, a different, I'm in a different mental state. So tell us, uh, what is the impact of poor emotional or mental health, Patsy? Uh, thank you, Lucy. Um, we were talking about stress. That is what we need to keep reminding ourselves. And we say that uh, poorly uh, handled stress or stress that is not taken care of leads to depression. And yes. once we get into depression, uh, I'm sorry to say that is a mental illness. Yeah. So when it gets uh, that down is a to mental, mental illness, when it gets to the mental illness, then we need help and we need to to seek the help that we need. Uh, I don't know whether we've lost uh, Patsy there. I think I think we have. So that impact of poor mental health and the and the and the little tips that I was giving you of how you can know, the impact is that it leads you to mental illness if it is not tackled well, if it is not handled in good time. And just like with a lady who reached out to me yesterday, I directed her to a counselor. Yes, it seems we have lost Patsy. I directed her to a counselor because help is around the corner. We need to have the courage to seek help. 
The statistics that we have right now of suicide, the statistics that we have right now of people harming themselves. And when I talk about harming, you will find, especially when it comes to children in school, is cutting. All this is as a result of trying to manage your mental illness, trying to manage the stress in your life. So the illness then presents itself as you cutting yourself. And therefore, you need to watch out for your daughters, especially, because they end up cutting their, their bodies because that pain. And if you ask a young girl, why did you cut yourself? And she will say that when I cut myself, I feel relieved of the pain. Now, physiologically, once you cut yourself and the blood is flowing, there is that relief and you end up, your blood pressure drops. So physiologically, this works. Unfortunately, as you continue to do this, you're not taking care of your mental illness. And the different things that we'll be able to show you that you're going down this road is when you have this perpetual feeling of not being able to get up to do things, of not being able to stay the course. You start doing something and then immediately you lose that attention or that attention span, that concentration. Perhaps you're in a group of people and you are always the life of the party. I'm giving you tips of that poor mental health that could lead to what Patsy was saying, which is mental illness. So what do you want to do about it? In one of our episodes, we talked about keeping a journal of these instances. Now, when you keep a journal of these instances, you are able to know that this is what is, could be bothering me. One, two, three, it could be one of these things. So when I wake up and I'm sad, so maybe I will be, um, why don't I give you an example? Because we were talking about my examples for this month. So one of the things that was affecting me this month was it was the first year memorial of my mother. She passed away last year on April the 6th. So it was, the, it was those feelings of revisiting how she was ill and how she ended up passing on. And the fact that I was going to go home and see the grave, and then we were going to celebrate her life on the unveiling of the cross or unveiling of the grave, as it were. And these are the things that I realized were my stressors. There were many of them. I was going to go home and I was going to feel the emptiness of not having mom around. So this was stressing me. And therefore, when I realized that's what it was, and I took note of my stresses, I found that my load was getting lighter. I began to speak about the things that were stressing me because I had this perpetual sadness, this perpetual feeling of anxiety that was pulling me down. So what are you feeling today? What one thing is it that is pulling you down and you need to do something about it? Be aware of that stressor and know what it is you want to do. So the question today I read it out is, what intentional action do you do for your mental wellness? Well, one of them for me is being aware of my stressor. Agnes said, and Sheila said, it is exercise. I also do my exercise. I'm one of those OCD people who prepare themselves over and over and over so that we can get things right. These are the things that help. So I can see that uh, Patsy is back. Patsy, we left off when we were talking about mental illness being the end game if we do not take care or manage our stress. And it is called mental illness. So I have shared a few examples of myself and what I was going through this month and how it can end up being mental illness. So what are your thoughts on that as we come to the end of our session today, Patsy? Um, sorry about that, uh, because I disappeared. Um, you're not able to maybe, hear me, maybe, right? Maybe, Patsy, maybe because I know you've missed quite a bit. Maybe what you could do is tell us, give us tips on how we can control our mental state. Perhaps telling us how we can take back control, how we can manage it in that way 
tell us maybe why wellness is within our control. Um, wellness is within our control because this happens in our mind. Uh, therefore, you can control uh, your physical habits. It yeah. is possible to control your physical habits. Uh, and uh, you can also control uh, the experiences that you have. Uh, because, for example, um, if someone asks you to do something that you're, you're not comfortable doing, that is within your control. And you can say no. Remember we talked about uh, one of the ways of, of handling stress is knowing your limits. And uh, uh, we mentioned uh, the issue of saying no. And we said it's not easy. But you can practice that. I'm also one of the people who experiences that as a problem because sometimes you don't want to annoy your friends and all that. But for example, yeah. if your friends want, they want you to go out with them. And maybe you know you're going to overindulge or wherever they're, wherever they're taking you, you are not comfortable. Or maybe you do not have money, enough money. And they're asking you to accompany them. And of course, you know what is going to happen there. And for this, uh, we, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll be talking to the young people that it is important because there, there is what we call peer pressure. So peer pressure can come as a result of uh, people pushing you to do things that you're not comfortable with. So for your mental wellness, it is within your control to say no. And so it, it becomes easier for you. When you say no, much as you will feel guilty that you have maybe told your friends that it's not possible, but at the end of it all, you will be taking care of your wellness, your mental wellness. wellness. So it is in our control. We can do this. And you know, Patsy, I'm just going to add in, it's in, in addition to it being for the youth, even for us as adults, um, there's a saying that goes, keeping up with the Joneses. So the Joneses are, you know, it's, it's a fabled story, but it just means that you want to be like everybody else. You want to live in a certain neighborhood. You want to dress in a certain way. You want to work in a certain office. You want to drive a certain car. You want your children to go to a certain school. You want to speak in a certain way. You want to be seen with specific people. And this is so against your own values. But because mm -hmm. you have compared yourself to somebody else, and those are Joneses, and by society's um, mapping out or society's ranking, it is perceived, because like you say, it happens in the mind. It is perceived that that is the life that should be lived by everybody. And you are miserable. When you come home in the night, only you know what your night is like, because that is when all the darkness visits you, especially the darkness being, number one, the debt. The debt is what happens. And this drags you into depression. Because now you don't know how to say no. You're the one who decided to walk this path. It wasn't your friends who asked you to. So as an adult, the decisions that you make are within your control. Make decisions that you can be true to, that you can live up to. One of the sweetest things that happened today is the birthday card that I have received from my children. And you can see it at the back here. This is my birthday card right next to my book. And this birthday card has got such moving words for me. It really moved me to tears this morning because of the things that the children were saying about me. Me, who is not perfect, but in my children's eyes, they are seeing perfection. Yet I am not perfect. And they were picking values and morals and important things in life is what they put in the card. It is what they're saying to me that moves me, that because of me, the decisions they're making in life are in a certain way. This is, this is moving. It is beautiful, but it's scary at the same time. But it's a decision that I have made as a parent to walk in that way. And therefore, I become a mentor. Does it mean it is easy? No, it is not easy, Patsy. Being saying yeah. no to certain things so I can say yes to others is not easy. But we can practice to do this. 
I like what Sheila is saying. She says, I too will be saying daily that my load is getting lighter. And I pray that upon you, Sheila, that your load gets lighter as you realize what your stresses are and you get the tips from Patsy of how to manage these stresses. Because stress is normal. It's going to happen to us every day. It's how yes. we manage these stresses that is important. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to Agnes who says, I realize, I realize when it comes to mental illness, self-awareness is key. Very true. What do you think about that, Patsy? Agnes says that when it comes to mental illness, self-awareness is key. What is your comment there, Patsy? Uh, my comment there, and thank you, for, uh, thank you, Agnes, for bringing it out. It is just knowing your triggers. Yeah. When you have mental illness, know your triggers. And avoid. We, we talked about stress, and we said one of the ways is avoiding. Like if you know that when you go out with your friends, you might it might even make you forget to take your medication because maybe you went out and you, you decided to spend the night there so those are triggers because once you don't take medication for example for those who are taking medication what happens you relax you relax and therefore just knowing the triggers and the issue of self-awareness the way lucy you keep bringing it up i like it because that is the key to life, you know, knowing what you're supposed to do, knowing the triggers is very important when it comes to mental illnesses. And mental illnesses, let's let's not look at it as if it is something that, um, like, um, when you say that um, somebody who has mental illness, let's not look at, at it like this is something that is out of the blues. No, it is manageable. It is possible. It is manageable as long as if you're seeing a doctor, you adhere to medication because even here where I work at Kenya Utali College, we have students I, I normally have in sessions who have mental illnesses, for example, bipolar. And what I emphasize, I always emphasize, take your medication, follow the a doctor's prescription, I mean, uh, um, adhere to medication because that is the most important. For me, I will only give you that counseling and, and maybe the talk therapy we keep talking about. But what is important is adhering to medication because there are those illnesses you have to live with, but with medication, all will be well. This is very true. Thank you very much for sharing that. So you have heard it. We can control our physical habits. We can control the decisions that we make. Therefore, wellness is within our control. Will stress happen? Yes, stress will happen. I mean, right now, today, we were looking at technology. When technology fails us, that means what we were in control of suddenly slips from our fingers. In that instant, we are stressed. This is normal and stress is healthy because with stress we get our adrenaline pumping and we figure out what to do next time in a different way. Without stress, life is not exciting. Let me not cheat yes. you. If you just live a life that is just flat there, there's no ups and downs, it's not exciting. We want a reason to wake up and go to work, a reason to wake up and love again, a reason to wake up and do something. This already in itself is tips on how to stay well, healthy in your mental wellness. So the tips for mental health, I'm just going to read them out here on my screen. There's the importance of positive mental state or mental health. Uh, Patsy spoke about that at length. And therefore, one of the things is choosing three positives against one negative. That one we are going to practice, Patsy, yes? So why don't you give us the takeaways, Patsy? Because that one of positive health, uh, positive mental state, I have loved it. Give us uh, the takeaways for today, Patsy. And uh, uh, those the th takeaways, I just want to recognize Jerry Maria here. I want to uh, recognize Maureen is here today. Good to see you, Maureen. I hope you did not fall off and that you are still with us and uh, Kavi and uh, Tolly, thank you so much guys for always coming on for our episode. So give us the takeaways as we come to the end of our session. Uh, thank you Lucy. Uh, the first takeaway is the importance of 
positive mental health. We have looked at that and we have seen that it is important that we be in our with our mental health should be good so that we are able to navigate through this life. Yeah. Uh, and we also talked about the impact of poor emotional health. Uh, that is the time I think I fell off for some time. I disappeared and as you talked about the, techni the te technology issues, that is what happened. And uh, as we were talking about it, we, we, we emphasized on the issue of depression. We, we say that we should not allow ourselves to get into depression, right? So uh, we will strive, we, we will learn that when we are, at, uh, we are faced with stress, let us try as much as possible to work on it, to take care of our mental health so that, it, that we do not get into the stage of depression because there we will have to be taking our medication, of which we don't want. Let us just have the, the, the illnesses that we are able to deal with on our own. And the last but not least, uh, we talked about working towards our wellness, and we say it is within our control. It is with, it, much as it may not be possible to control everything, but at least what is in your mind, you can work on it. And that's why we say, for every positive uh, negative thought, let us replace it with three because the three will kill the one negative thought which could be bothering you. There yes. you have you have the takeaways from Patsy, and indeed health and wellness is important for us. And I hope now you can concur with me that mental health is as important as physical health. Because as Patsy shared with us, it keeps us alert. It keeps us productive. The decisions that we make, it is easier to make decisions. Already the decision-making process in itself is a challenge. But once we have that healthy mental wellness, then it is easier for us to navigate decision making, especially as adults. So remember, you are not alone. Talk therapy is important. The Patsies of the world are here. They have studied this psychological need and they are there to help you and they give you tips and they give you direction. There's a whole um, uh, how do you call it? Healthy way that we can go about this. And the first one is to talk about it. They then give you ways to overcome it. The patsies are here. There is help, guys. Do not yes. be alone. I want to thank you, Pat, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for showing up for these four episodes. I do not thank take you. it lightly. I don't take it for granted. Not only are you showing up, you're also showing us and share, sharing with us your tips. You're very gracious in the things that you are sharing with us. And you are so vulnerable in the way that you share them. And you're so authentic. And I want to thank you for these nuggets. Patsy, Asante, Sana. Asante. Thank you. So thank we, have you. Total, thank you. we have a total of 10 nuggets that Patsy has shared with us in this four-part series of the stress situation. As we celebrate the month of April, which is a stress awareness month, let us not have it come to an end now. Let this conversation continue. If you need help and you don't know where to start, you can reach out to me and I can point you in the right direction of places you can choose. I have already seen a counselor or maybe a therapist as you call them, and I'm not ashamed to speak about it. See, I am not depressed because I asked for help. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and get the full episodes of these four episodes of the Stress Situation series. Tell us what you think about it. Tell us if you would like to hear more about mental wellness and how we can improve our mental wellness. Tell us what you want to know more about and we will try our best to bring it to you. Well, May is upon us. And May is a month where we celebrate motherhood. And we are calling it Motherhood May. We're going to have five episodes in May, all about motherhood. 
So if you want to talk to us and share with us your experience of motherhood, whether you are in a blended family and you have adopted family members, whether you are a single mother, whether you're a community mother, whether you're a mother-in-law, whether you're a grandmother, whether you're a mother who is struggling with a balance of career and motherhood, this episode or this uh, series is for you. We will be on Facebook starting next Tuesday. So please find the schedule on our social media. I would love for you to be with us. Come and let us engage about this beautiful gift that God gave us called motherhood. And let us help build one another. Until May, let us be kind to ourselves. Bye-bye now. Bye, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.